Hey, we're back with our rusty friend Greg Richard here, and today it's cylinder heads. Can you do a professional style cylinder head refurbishment at home for almost no money? Yeah, you can. Come on over, let me show you. Okay, we started some of our initial cleanup on the cylinder heads for Big Richard. A cordless drill and a wire brush. Just to clean up the carbon and the mud and the goo and everything. And what this is good for, not only it cleans without, you know, it's not a roll disc, so it's not going to divot the metal or anything like that. But also cleans out your seats pretty well. I mean, we'll go in and touch these up, obviously, and we'll go in and clean out our ports. But for the initial cleanup, we used our wire wheel. All right, once you have your valves cleaned up, again, this is kind of a before and an after. They were all just like this, just gross. Once you have them cleaned up, go ahead, make sure they slide in and out of the valve guide smoothly, like so. And we're gonna lap this one in, show you what that looks like. Once you've lapped in your valves, you should have a nice, see if I can get the light to bounce off it just right, a nice clean ring all, all the way around the seat of this valve. And again, this is what it would look like before. Just oil fouled, just crap, not gonna seal. To a nice even surface. There we go, there's a light on it, pretty good. Now we're not gonna show you all 16 valves, but that's the process. And if you wanna see a valve lapping video, let me know in the comments because that's a whole separate deal. But let me show you what this valve seat's gonna look like. And that's what our lapped valve seat surface, see if I can get it to focus all the way around. Should look like nice and clean all the way around. No pits, no cracks, nothing like that. And in contrast, a non-lapped one is going to be, you know, well, these aren't too bad. But you're going to see it's not a nice clean ring like this one is. And that lets us know when we put our valves together and finish our cylinder head assembly that we're going to have a good seal, valve-wise anyway, on this cylinder. You know, we're not porting the heads, but we are cleaning up all the gunk and all the casting flash just to make them, you know, smooth, no hot spots, things like that. And then there's the before. <laughs> Most of these look like just guck and goo, and you can see all this flash on the inside of this one here that we'll get rid of. All the dirt and grime, just to make this run real nice when we're all done cleaning her up. All right, guys, a couple hours of cleaning into our cylinder heads, and we have some pretty big improvements. And you can see the just to remind you what this all looked like before, just the crap and crud and rust, ick. We're making pretty good progress. We've cleaned up a lot of the bowls, best we could see in the camera here. Yeah, there's still maybe a little bit of dirt and stuff way down in there, but they're looking really good. Any ports that had a little casting slag in them, we cleaned those up. There's a little bit right there that we're gonna have to get to yet. Miss that, we'll go back and get that. Learn it. These are looking pretty good. We got the deck sanded. All right, real quick. On reassembly, once we've cleaned our heads, cleaned the chambers, lapped the valves, valve, new valve seal, goes on top here. You run the valve through it, kind of holds it in place. Spring, little grease on the end of the valve where the keepers sit. So once you go to put your keepers on, they stay on. Place the top on the spring. Compress your spring and you get two of your keepers and they get placed. There's a fat side and a thin side, like a cone. Fat side's always to the top, thin side's to the bottom. Place them on your valves and that's why we put a little grease on them so they hold in place. With any luck, your keepers don't come flying out. They stay set, holding your retainer, which holds in the spring that holds in your valve. And then repeat the same process for the intake valve. And you got one cylinder done. And one thing to note when you're doing this yourself, the exhaust valve and the intake valve both have different keepers. The exhaust valve has this three rib and the intake valve has this two rib. And you can't really mix them up, but just a heads up so you don't go ahead and, you know, put stuff together wrong. And an hour or so later, you have a completed cylinder head. And let me show you what it looks like sitting on the motor. 
And here's what it looks like sitting on the motor. Why don't we just put one cylinder head on the motor before we even put pistons in? Basically just to get it off my bench. So there you go, one cylinder head down, one to go. Wow, that was a lot of work. Finally finished up with cylinder head number two. They all look great, everything went together real nice. Should have no worries with any of these. It's a lot of work, but it's done. And real quick, I'm gonna show you a couple things. I'm gonna show you, show you how this was all done on a really tight budget, like no money. And then just some of the tools that we used to achieve this nice finish on the mating surface and everything else like that. So come on over, let me show you where I have this stuff laid out and then we'll pop it on the motor with the intake and stuff like that and kind of see where we're at. It's coming along. Okay, first, some of the basic tools you're gonna need for this, of course, a spring compressor, some valve grinding compound, wire wheel. Um, I like to use these little disposable sand, sand, you know, they're sandpaper cones to get in the clean all the carbon out and stuff like that. A carbide bit, and you could just use that on your on your drill. And all we really used this for was casting flash, casting imperfections, just to kind of make it smooth. Again, we didn't port the motor, but we did, you know, make it nice inside the cylinders. A little grease to hold the keepers in when you put the valves together. We did use a roll lock. Now, you want to use this, this little machine very sparingly. The only parts of the cylinder head that I used this on was on the valves themselves to clean the carbon off the valves. Never use this on a mating surface and never use this inside the cylinders. It removes metal faster than you can think about it. And if you use it on the mating surface, it's never going to be flat again. And one last thing, that's kind of the my trick. This is a pneumatic block sander. You generally use on body work, but for the cylinder heads, 80 grit paper, cleans all the gaskets off, doesn't move the metal, gives you a nice surface on not only the cylinder head surface, but on the intake side also. Uh, a real neat trick. Real inexpensive to use, gives you a real good results. Maybe something you never thought of before, but it does work very, very nice, and it's cheap. Unless you have some warpage or crackage or, you know, weird cylinder heads. And when working with aluminum cylinder heads, throw all this stuff away because it's... Aluminum cylinder heads are a whole different animal, but for the regular steel cylinder heads, that's all you need. And here you can kind of see where the vision for this little 318-ish is going. Of course, we have work to do yet. And being a 68, this whole block and everything will be red. But this is where we're headed, boys and girls. I think it's great. Okay, guys, that's our cylinder head refurbishment. Again, a real nice professional looking job. No money. It's really easy to do, barring you don't have any, like, you know, major warpage or anything cracked or broken or anything like that. You could do this all at home. It's a lot of work, but yes, you can do it. You know, and it's pretty easy. It's just a little time consuming to have everything done and cleaned and, you know, really ready to go. See the results for yourself. Looks pretty good to me. And as always, down below, comments, questions, concerns, things I did right, things I did wrong, things were like, oh my God, why did you do that? Or, hey, that was cool. Down in the comments below, it really helps out the channel. Go check out the merch. And as always, try to buy a hat. And we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.